this year's GI Amtrak was um, was very informative and, and very important, especially given the pandemic and us now moving towards a, a virtual format. But there were several uh, presentations I thought were uh, interesting and potentially package changing. Um, one is uh, Amtrak 160 by Warmberg et al. This was the fight study, a randomized double-blinded placebo-controlled phase two study looking at bimeracuzumab combined with modified Fox 6 and first-line treatment of advanced gastric and gastroesophageal junction adenocarcinoma. Bimeracuzumab, or BEMA for short, uh, is an IgG1 monoclonal antibody that binds to FGFR2B, mediating antibody-dependent cell-mediated cytotoxicity. The study showed an improvement in median progression-free survival from 7.4 months to 9.5 months in favor of BEMA, and the secondary endpoint of overall survival was met, where the median OS was not reached in the BEMA arm and was 12.9 months in the placebo arm, a difference that was statistically significant. We look forward to the phase three study. The next abstract that I thought was uh, very interesting was abstract 11 by Hendrickson and al. This was a study on circulating tumor DNA uh, for the assessment of recurrence risk, uh, benefit of adjuvant therapy, and early relapse detection after treatment for colorectal cancer. Uh, in this study, 255 patients with stage one to three colorectal cancer had their circulating tumor DNA or CT DNA collected at various time points along their treatment and surveillance course. Post-operative CT DNA status uh, prior to adjuvant chemotherapy was assessed in 218 patients, of which 9% were identified to be MRD positive. 75% of these patients eventually relapsed. In contrast, only 14% of MRD negative cases relapsed. For those patients with post-operative CEA and CTDNA measurements, CTDNA positive status was found to be more significantly associated with recurrence-free survival compared to CEA. We look certainly look forward to more studies. <clears throat> we certainly look forward to more studies on this important diagnostic tool in the future. Abstract 360, uh, abstract 360 by Garcia Carbonero uh, et al. was the accident study a phase two, three randomized double-blind study of octreotide acetate with exitinib versus octreotide acetate with placebo in patients with advanced G1, G2 neuroendocrine tumors of non-pancreatic origin. In this study, the objective response rate was significantly higher in the exitinib arm at 17.5% compared to the placebo-treated patients where response was 3.8%, a statistically significant difference. Progression-free survival was found to be 17.2 months in the exitinib arm compared to 12.3 months in the placebo arm. While favoring exitinib, this difference, however, was not statistically significant. Further studies are needed to identify the role of tyrosine kinase inhibitors in neuroendocrine carcinoma of the GI tract. Finally, abstract 377 by Katz et al. was the Alliance 021501 study on preoperative modified fulfurinox or modified fulfurinox plus hypofraction irradiation therapy for borderline resectable pancreatic adenocarcinoma. With regards to surgical outcomes, patients who received radiation therapy were found to have an R0 resection rate of 25%, while those only receiving chemo had an R0 resection rate of 42%. With regards to overall survival outcomes, the 18-month overall survival rate in the chemo-only arm was 68%, compared to 47% in the radiation therapy-treated arm. Among patients who were able to undergo pancreatectomy, the 18-month overall survival rate was 93% in the chemo-only arm and 79% in the radiation therapy arm. Here, the authors showed that neoadjuvant radiation therapy did not improve overall survival compared to chemotherapy alone, suggesting that neoadjuvant radiation therapy should not be routinely recommended for everyone with borderline receptor pancreatic cancer.